Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com. I hope you're doing well. Today I am here with a fun, functional, and fast sewing project for you. We are actually going to be revisiting my dual compartment caddy, which I designed and created a tutorial for a couple years ago. So there are three reasons why I want to revisit this tutorial. The first is the lighting in the original video was subpar. And so I want to recreate that with a better lighting. And then secondly, I would like to add a little bit of interfacing. I'm just using a lightweight fusible interfacing and see how that changes the stability of this project. And then last but not least, I just really need another one of these in my life. So this was a great time to do that. Um, as an added bonus, because I'm reproducing the tutorial in 2021, there will also be a design board to go along with this project. If you're not familiar, the design boards are PDF files, which you can purchase for a nominal fee and then save or download or print on your own devices. And I'm committed to producing a new design board for every video tutorial in 2021. So you'll be able to collect those and I just want to give you the heads up that very soon I will be having a sale in my Etsy pattern shop when you purchase three or more of the design boards. So keep an eye out for more details about that if you follow at SoSpire on Instagram or Facebook, you will be amongst the first to know. And then if you are a SoSpire patron, please don't forget that you receive a complimentary copy of each design board as they are produced. So you'll want to log into the SoSpire Patreon page and grab your copies when it's convenient for you. So without further ado, shall we get started? Okay, so for this project, you're going to need about a quarter yard of 54 inch home decor fabric, and then less than a half a yard of 44 inch quilt weight cotton. And if you were really precise, you could probably get away with a quarter yard of the quilt weight cotton, but I don't wanna stress anybody out. So if you're shopping specifically for this project, go ahead and purchase a half a yard of the quilt weight cotton. And we are going to begin with the exterior of this project. The two side panels measure six by six. And then the three body panels measure six by 12. They are backed with a lightweight fusible interfacing. You could do a midweight fusible interfacing as well. I went with the Pellon 808 slash 809 and it just gives that fabric a little bit of body. And I really do like this print, it's really pretty. Okay, so we're gonna use the modified T method and the way that the modified T method works is you're gonna take your front exterior panel and your two side panels and you're going to position those side panels right sides facing on top of that front exterior panel and you're going to align those side edges and then using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance stitch down the right and the left hand sides I do back stitch at the beginning and the end. For this project, I'm using a 3.0 stitch length and a 9014 needle. And that creates a 
three-way folding panel, which will set aside for a few moments. Then you're going to take the rear exterior panel and the base exterior panel, position those right sides facing. They are also backed with the pellon. And using the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, join those panels along that one long side. And that creates a two-way folding panel. Then you're going to position the base panel on top of that tri-folding panel and you'll be centering that base panel on the center of what will be the front panel. And then you're going to stitch seam to seam, which is different than end to end. You're just stopping right on that stitch line. You're starting and stopping right on the stitch line, just to be clear about that. And then that creates the fat T, hence the T method. So the modified T method then calls for you to align the base of the sides with the side of the base. And I like to work one side at a time. And so I just line up those edges and then I stitch again seam to seam. Then I'm going to repeat that process on the opposite side. I'm just aligning the edges and stitching seam to seam. And now the stage is set. You just need to raise up that remaining side wall and align those sides and then stitch from the top to the seam. And you repeat that process for the last side. And then you should have a rectangular box. If you created a second identical one, you would have a darling little rectangular cubby box. We are going to take this project to the next level and we are going to incorporate two square boxes on the inside of this, which will then offer us a two-way divided interior. I really prefer this modified T method as opposed to the original T method because it results in such a nice corner. Everything's just aligned so beautifully. So once you turn your exterior around to the right side, go ahead and turn over that top edge about a half an inch. I like to turn over the sides first and get a clip in each corner. And then I can just pull and guide over that center and it usually turns out pretty straight.
You also have the option of pressing that over if you would like. And that's what it looks like on the inside. I really love this fabric, it's so sweet. Okay, using the same modified T method and 10 six by six inch squares, you're going to create two cubes for the interior. And these cubes are going to be left with the wrong sides facing out and you're going to take that top edge and you're going to fold it over about an inch and then go ahead and press that nice and flat. I did not use any interfacing on my interior cubes. You certainly could use the Pelon 808 or 809. That would be perfectly fine and I would say most sewing machines could handle that level of thickness. So you'll be totally fine with that. I just opted to not include interfacing on mine because I don't need this to be crazy stable. I just wanted it to stand alone when it's empty. Okay, so what you're going to do after you get the two boxes crafted using the modified T method, which just to review for you, is attaching the sides to the front panel and then the base to the rear panel and then joining your three-way and two-way panel to create that large T and then you're going to attach the base of the side to the side of the base and then raise up that remaining wall, okay? And again, I have the design board which includes all of those steps um, if you like to have something right next to you when you're working to take notes on and such. So we're going to go ahead and line these panels up and we're going to match up those side seams so that we can keep this nice and straight. And I have selected this gorgeous little coral color print here and it kind of has like rainbow scallops on it. It really looks nice with this home decor fabric. And so I'm going to fit this dual compartment inside of my exterior. And the same thing, I'm just going to begin on one end and I'm going to line up the side seams first. And then I'm going to pull on that front panel and line that up nice and straight. And these clips are just absolutely wonderful for this project. All right, so here's what I have so far. It's darling. Now I want to craft two narrow straps to go on each end in case I need to move this around. These little straps are very handy to do that. This is a wonderful caddy for holding like fat quarters, for holding all your sewing supplies and such. In fact, that's what I'm gonna use it for on my work surface here so I will be sure to share a picture with you all on Instagram and Facebook of what that looks all loaded up. But in order to craft these little straps, which measure three by eight inches, you are going to use my standard strap method. And that involves pressing that fabric in half long ways then bringing those outer edges inward to meet on that center press line, and then folding that over to create a four ply strap. For this particular project, I did insert some of the Pelon one and a half inch strip on that center channel, and I pressed that down, and then I folded the strap over again. I wanted 
the strap to always stand up and have that stability. So that's why I incorporated the interfacing in that. So then what you're going to do is just run a row of stitching down that open edge to finish that strap up. And these straps are going to get tucked in between the interior and the exterior on that side panel and they are not going to be very far from that side seam at all um, an inch at the most because they are nice little short straps so if you bump in an inch from that side seam you should be just fine um, you have some flexibility there if you want to adjust a bit but it's basically it's just like a little finger handle there so you can transport the caddy with ease i like to put the stitching towards the outer edges of that um, it's just a personal preference i don't know that it really matters and that's what that looks like it's just so darling and it's really a wonderful size too for your work surface so now what you're going to want to do is stitch from the center divider around the edge and then stop at the center divider then you're going to come to the opposite side and stitch around and stop and then you will come in and stitch the center. I like to stitch the right side, the left side, and then the center so that I don't consume too much of my slack by stitching the center first. And I'm honestly not sure if in that original tutorial, I may have had you stitch the center first um, and I can see how that might cause this to kind of bow in a little bit. So we will compare the two after I'm done stitching here. But again, I do think it will be easiest to stitch the right side, the left side, and then the center. So I'm just going to position this right up on the machine deck and get in as close as I can to that center divider without overlapping that divider. And I'm gonna align that right hand edge of my sewing foot with the top edge of the fabric. And I will back stitch, and then I'm just gonna go nice and slow in a U shape. When I get to those handles, I'm gonna back stitch to reinforce. So I have the U all the way around the right hand side and my handle is secure. I did have to remove those center clips as I approached that. So I'm just going to replace those so that nothing shifts and it's looking really good. 
Now I'm going to put the opposite side up on the machine deck and I'm just going to back it in so I hopefully start right where that opposite stitch ended. And I'll just move really slow and go all the way around. Take the time to reinforce that opposite handle. The last thing that I have to do is to stitch together that lining in the center. If you were really clever, you could fit a little lining inside of there. Maybe you could even install a little zipper. That would definitely be a fun sewing challenge. So what I'm going to do is just pull this nice and taut and then fit that up on the machine deck and stitch from end to end there so I join up those two stitch lines I want to line everything so it's nice and straight and for this part it helps to just kind of back the project in lift up that foot and back it in so you start right on that seam And then try to stop right on that seam because you don't want to over stitch there or it is going to give it a little bit of a wonky shape and this turned out great it's so cute right just like I promised fast fun and functional sewing project and it doesn't even use that much fabric less than a half a yard of fabric and you have a really stylish caddy to get your surfaces organized. As promised, we'll compare the two with or without the interfacing and you can tell a difference. I personally do like it better with the interfacing and, uh, it, and it's, it's so interesting because this used the exact same measurements and this one is so much taller with the interfacing. So I must have folded over this top edge a lot more. Um, I definitely like it taller and I really love my new fabric choices as well. So I hope you enjoyed the project and we'll go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't had a chance yet, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel as well. And please do plan to join me next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, for another inspired sewing project. As always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful week, everyone. Thank you so much for sewing with me.